All right, so chapter 12 is introducing probability. Um, you're going to have two chapters about probability. Okay, this one is very, very uh, the beginning probability. So you should get this slide. If you don't, going to be have a hard time on the next slide, the next chapter. So example, um, if I want to roll six-sided si six dice, so the dice have six sides, um, what are the possible outcomes? What are the possible outcomes that I can have? Yeah, one to six. So six, right? There's six. So one, you can have a one, you can have a two, you can have a three or four or five or six. Before you roll dice, do you know which one will occur? Oh, how come it's, oh, sorry. You guys see my slide through the thing, but beyond there. Do you know, uh, what, before you roll that, do you know which one will occur? No, right? No, it's all random. Oh, my hand keep touching on the side. So, nope. <clears throat> what is the probability what an outcome will be a four? Okay. What is the probability will be a four? Yeah, one out of six, right? So one six. Could a six poss possibility? Uh, let me give you the um no, I mean, maybe I'll do it later. I, I'll, I'll do it later. The, the little form formula for probability. Um so I'm gonna use now I'm gonna use R Studio to uh, simulate that coin thing. Usually before I use R Studio, I have students come up here and flip the coin for me. <laughs> like each of them flip like 10 times or 20 times for two students. Oh, I'll continue. Let me share my screen here. Share. All right. So um, here I'm just gonna write on the thing here. I don't have to make it make it bigger for you so you can can see. There you go. So I want to flip a, so a coin. So the name, I'm going to name my sample spade coin. And I'm going to write my sample spade under um, as vector. So C, and then there's two, two possible outcome, either head or tail. You don't have to do this, just watch me. So that's vector spade. Uh, if you do number, like number one, number two, you don't have to do that quotation. But if you do letter, you have to have the quotation. <clears throat> Okay, so my result, it's gonna name result, result. Uh, right now it's just an empty shell, nothing. If I run, nothing, okay. Right now, I'm, next I'm gonna do a for i loop. So for, for function four right there, the function right there. The variable is gonna be i, you can do j if you want, k if you want, any letter you want. Uh, I'm gonna flip 10 times, so if i in, the vector here from one to 10, one colon 10 is from one to 10. And sample, I'm gonna sample it how many times? Say one time. So sample, the function sample right is x size replace x will be coin. Right, size is just one, one time. Just um, um, not one time, but um, re, say I have two students, I have, I have a student flip it. So one experiment, does that make sense? I can do two experiments, 20 times, 30 times. Psi equal one. Uh, replacement, should I do replacement false or true? True, true. All right, um, okay. Oops, what happened? Something wrong. Oh, I have to have that. The result has a result in J. Oh, my bad. Uh, start again. Hang on. That's why I wrote here. I always do. Hang on. I always do the R script. So I can fix. Simulating. Sampling. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> down here. 
two things. So right there, uh, now for I factor one to 10, uh, it's gonna be the result. The result sample one time x is coin uh, psi replace okay psi equal one replacement it's true you can do probably if probably no which i'm not going to do that it's fine <clears throat> and down here let's see uh, well, after all that i see a head table how many how many head how many how many cell i'm going to have table table why don't they put a function for me Table result. Okay, so let's run. Point result. Right. Oh, mm, something wrong. Table here. Result sample point sign replacement tree. Something wrong. And, um, oh, result. Oh, that's right. I don't only do one. Okay, result has to be I. <coughs> one more time. Oh, right there. Wow. <laughs> Ain't that uh, rare? Five out of five, 50, 50. Uh, that's kind of rare. Let me run it again. What if, what if I flip 100 times? 53 head and 47 tail, right? What if a thousand times? Uh, 16 and 4, 84. What do, you, what do you notice about those two numbers, head and tail? They what? Yeah, they're very close to 50-50, right? So now, um, if somebody, if, if a student flipped 10 times, it's rare that it's gonna be five heads and five tails because of this computer. Um, <clears throat> but the thing is that probability, if you you flip like 1,000 times, 2,000 times, the long-term probability is gonna be what? 50-50, close to 50-50, right? So that's the um, <clears throat> the sto story, uh, the side of the story. Uh, so let me go back here. Share my screen from the okay. All right, so let me write some stuff here. Now, I want uh, there are three things, three ways to think about probabilities. Um, first is called personal or subjective probability. So, this one P, P of A is the probability of A is going to be is going to happen. Uh, so in this case, a personal probability, the degree in which a given individual believes that event A will happen. Did you guys watch Super Bowl yesterday? <laughs> yeah, I, I like the commercial mostly. Uh, more like a basketball fan. Um, all right, so say you watch with your buddy and ask you, what, what is the probability of the Rams going to win? Right? And they say 70%. So that's his judgment, right? That's not a long-term probability. You just guess. So that's called personal probability. Uh, we don't go into this a lot. This is P of A here. Um, for me, is eh, eh, I wouldn't count it as statistic. So it's just yes. At Mo is educated guess. Um, so we, we, I read it. I touch that. Uh, long term relative frequency is what I'm interested in. Long term re relative frequency. Again, P of A here is. The probability or portion of times event A occurs if a random exper experiment is repeated many, many times. Think stocks, right? Think stock. So historically showing that usually stocks they grow over times, right? It will be up and down, be up and down. But you invest, if you invest a thousand dollars back in um, say in um say Amazon <laughs> a few years ago, you invest like thousand dollars in Amazon, say, say seven years ago, you'd be good to make a lot of money now, right? Or any stock, over time is kind of go up. Right? Things will happen, say 2009 or 2020, uh, but stock will always um, get back up. So that's a long-term relative frequency. Maybe I'll write down here. Say, uh, think market. For well, this one, um, just personal, educated guess as best. I'm not very crazy about this one. 
just had to mention for you. So you can um, distinguish which is which. Um, basket model, very popular too. Basket model is the probability, uh, unlike, unlike the long-term relative frequency, uh, it's the probability that a, um, say, a probability of that you say there's a mob, I have a bunch of marbles in my basket. What is the probability that I'm gonna pick out a, a red marble or a blue marble? Right? So here, if I have 10 marbles in the basket, can someone tell me what is probability I'm gonna pick out a blue marble? This is the, the model that you're gonna see a lot in statistics class or discrete class. How many, how many blue? Three, and three out of 10, right? It's kind of like one out of six, three out of 10. Three out of 10. Uh, so let me tell you for this basket model, the, the formula will be this, your probability of, um, say desired outcome. Is the desire have D in it? Desire, maybe there's D in it. Desired outcome is equal to number of <clears throat> number of number of desire outcome divided by it could be uh, outcomes, it could be plural or or let me write it again. outcome divided by the possible outcome. So in this case, you one blue model, right? So how many, how many, how many models in the desired outcome would be what? There are three of them. And then the possible outcome, there's 10 of them, like possible, so three over 10. Same thing with the um, six-sided dice. Right, you want a four, so one out of ten will be four, one out of six will be four, and the possible outcome is six. Uh, the possible outcome, uh, in another term, another fancy way, is called the sample space. Sample space, remember that for your quiz. <clears throat> okay, um, oh, one more thing. A probability statement is not a statement about fact. It is a statement about chance. It's chance. If you ask me, everything in life except death or taxes is all about chance. Right? 10 years, 15 years ago, I was in Vietnam. I never thought I'd come here and teach. Uh, even become a teacher was never crossed my mind. But here I am to be a teacher. I was thinking of doing any, something in the bank or something, but never a teacher. So chance, right? Um, okay, a few ways to think about probably continue. Try this one. Uh, read it and try and tell me what you think. No, you don't have to put it in the chat. It's a long explanation. So just tell me what you think. <clears throat> you can mean, know what uh, flush means. Yeah. I didn't know before the student <laughs> last week explained it to me, but I didn't know before. What do you think? Infinite here, no more here. Meyer, right? Meyer. Megan is here. Oh, what about other people? Sean is here. What? Bailey and Kate, Caitlin. <clears throat> okay. Uh, all right. So tell me what you think. Tell me what you think about this.
is uh, have something to do with uh, the note, that, that, that note line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Maya? There's a one in five million chance that you can get it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you will get it. Yeah, very good, right? It's chance. It's not fact, right? It's not like uh, when you uh, when you dealt um, 508 call, you always get a flush. No, it's not true, right? It's the chance, how likely you're going to get a flush. So uh, one over 508 means that um, when you dealt 585 car uh, uh, poker hand. Do you guys play poker? No, neither do I. Um, it's likely, likely, yeah. You one will be that one will be a flush. <laughs> okay, that's it. Uh, this one I want you to put, um, try to answer the put in the chat one and two. Privately to me. Okay. Make sure you label number one, number two, so I know. This Wednesday, we have a quiz. Uh, it's gonna be exclusively on chapter 12, okay? And I'll, I'll try to make it easy this time. It'll be easy, I promise. Easier than the last two times. It's just introducing probability. <clears throat> So everybody, move on some time. Um, Sean, um, point one for North Carolina. Uh huh. Oh, 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 okay, okay, yeah. Uh, twenty-five percent for Duke for the team. Point six. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amaya, North Carolina, point one. Duke, point two. Point six five for the other team. Uh, no more, point one for North Carolina, Duke, point two. Number two, 99%. How do you come by 99%? No more? Oh, that's okay. I'm just, I'm just uh, curious. I'll let you know how student made mistakes so I can uh, sympathize. <laughs> okay, so um, very good. So um, let's see. Uh, he thinks that Louis, Louisville is probably winning is 5%, right? So that means North Carolina twice Louisville. So be so P of North Carolina's NC win, say win is equal to 0.1. Right, very good. Um, and Duke is four times Louisville, so four times five, so the 20%. So the probability of Duke win is 0.2. Um, remember the all the probability add up to what? To one, right? To one. So P of other probability of others win is equal to one minus what one minus Louisville, which is 0 0.05, add to plus 2.1, which is North Carolina and Duke. Uh, so 0.65. You do it in your head. That's why. Okay, very good. So people, um, so if you got the number one right, one one bonus check mark, number two, uh, another bonus check mark, if you got it right. Okay. If you got one right, so you get yourself one bonus check mark. Thank you. All right, sample space is all the possible outcome. That's all you remember. And make sure you know this, it will be on the exam, on the, on the, on the quiz. Uh, an event is an outcome or a set of outcomes of a random phenomenon. Oh, uh, let me explain what is a sample space. So if you guys go back all the way to the beginning, I said that all the possible outcome of a rolling a six-sided dice would be one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So the possible outcome, there's six possible outcomes here. Right? So those are sample space. Um, what about flipping the coins? What are my sample space? Yeah, head or tail, right? Yeah, they're very good. So you gotta understand what sample space is. An event is an outcome or a set of outcomes of random phenomenon. That is, an event is a subset of a sample space. So the um, say, um, uh, um, <laughs> Sean get a head, head. Sean get a head in the first flip. Special event. Head is one of the sample space. Sample space is head and tail, right? So that's the sample space. Uh, an event usually denote in statistic is x equal x something. So x say x greater than four, x equal, so I'm just make this up, okay? So x something less than, greater than, <clears throat> less than or equal to, I'm just make things up. But that's how we denote in statistic. Uh, probability model is a mathematical description of random phenomenon consisting of two parts, a sample space S and a a way of assigning probability to events. Um, this is just the two. Um, make sure you understand what a sample space. I think you do. Uh, same thing you understand. You should understand what's the event. For this one, um, you have to do math to understand what that means. Right? You don't have to remember all. I'm, I will never ever test you on, on the last one, all the words. But we, we're going to do some math. So um, for each of these, I want you to list out we do it together. Uh, what is the sample space of each uh, circumstances? Does student have a pet or not? So what is the sample space here? Sample space here is kind of like coin. Yeah, yes or no. Do you have a pet or you don't have a pet, right? Uh, by the way, when you write sample space, I want a, a, a capital S and equal and then the curly bracket, okay? So pet or no pet. <clears throat> what is the student height in meters? 
well, just make up some 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 number from what? Say from one. It it could be before one. I wouldn't include zero here. <laughs> Even when you was born, it's longer than zero meter. Um, I would say point. Say students. So I'm just gonna start at one. One meter. I'm one point five six in meter. So so one would be very short. <laughs> It'd be very short. Uh, one, one point one, one point two, one point two three five, even one point three five six. You can add a number, right? It's it's a continuous variable. You don't have to count all the way to um, one point nine to two meter will be very tall. Someone two meter very tall. Anyone two meter? I think there's a guy in China. He died though. Uh, he extremely tall. What are the last three digits of student's cell phone number? What do you think? <clears throat> yeah, good. You start at zero, zero, right? And walk your way up. Zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, uh, zero, one, zero. Uh, any, right, any combination, right? All the way to one, 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 two, 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 one, three. Any combination all the way to what? Yeah, nine, nine, nine. Any combinations, a lot of combinations. Uh, what is student birth month? Yeah, Jan, Feb, all the way to December. So there are 12 possible outcomes. <clears throat> okay. So far, so good. You got comfortable with sample space? Yeah. All right. Um, now it comes to probability rules. What time is it? Six o'clock. No, we, we have time. We will start. We'll finish 12.4 and we take a little break. Um, the probability of the probability of event A, the note P of A, uh, is between zero and one. That's what the first one said. It, you, it cannot be less than one or greater than one. It has to be between zero and one, right? Uh, probability. If S is a sample space of a probability model, then P of sample space equal one. Remember sample space, it consists all of what possible outcomes, right? So all the possible outcomes, the probabilities of all possible outcomes should be added to one. Uh, let me write it something here. Maybe I'll write something here. The prob... The probability, probability, let me, let's see. I don't know where I put this one. Scam lightly. All right, the probability of all possible outcome Again, possible outcomes are simple way should add up to one. <clears throat> Two event A and B are disjoint. Uh, sometimes they call mutually exclusive. So disjoint means, I'm sure you can see I use black. Disjoint means mutually exclusive. I use the word joint for shorter. <clears throat> if A and B are this joint event, then <clears throat> P of A or B equal to P of A plus P of B. So if I draw, you guys um, familiar with Venn diagram? Have you heard of it? Yeah. So here's a Venn diagram. The, the box is your sample. That's S. That's your sample space. Um, and the ball is going to be your event. Sometimes sometime your possible outcome, don't write this down yet. Uh, Sometimes your possible outcome take up all the sample space. Rem uh, remember the flipping coin, either you have head or tail, right? It took up the only two possible outcomes. But sometimes it's not. Actually, a lot of times not. <coughs> Say I have event A here and event B here. Because A and B are disjoint. They have no intersection. 
Um, and then when you see or, that means union. So A or B mean union. In um, I'm gonna use this notation a lot. That's the 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 big U. That's or. Okay, so when I say uh, that's a cup. So A cup B means A or B. <clears throat> means union. I mean you, union mean together. Now right? you add up the two balls. In this case, because the two ball have no intersection, so it's just P of A plus P of B. So this is addition rule. Addition rule for disjoint event. There will be another rule called general addition rule. And it's, uh, it's gonna be less than this. We subtract the uh, intersection, but uh, we'll worry about it later. Okay, but to remember now, the join mean two separate balls, and then the union of the two separate ball is P of A plus P of B. The complement rule, the probability of event A does not occur, denote P of A complement or P of A bar. So let me draw a Venn diagram. That is, the ball is A. Tell me what is A and A, the complement of, of A? Where, where should I shave? What? What's A complement? Where should I shade? According to what they say up there. Where would I shade? Yeah, as I circle, right? A complement is everything but A. This shade on. So let me shade it in blue. Whatever that is, it could be C, B, C, whatever that is. But I know it's not, it's, it's not A, so it's A complement. C, C in blue. <clears throat> but let's try this one. Uh, you, I want you to do it and put in the chat, all three of them, privately seen. Make sure you use the rules. <clears throat> All right, mm, let's see. Uh, okay, no more. Probability of English or French is 0.78. Just mm -hmm. add them up. Two uh, P of mm -hmm. so subtract. Yeah, sub subtract from one. So 0.22 for other. Uh, huh? Say it again. Oh, maybe later or something. Now or now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe uh, other people was faster in between. Mm -hmm. Um, P of not English, good, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, um, no more Maya, uh, yep, mm -hmm. good, yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, internet, P of English, 78, P of question mark, 22, P of not English, 43, Sean, good, same, Megan, very good, you all have three, Bonus check marks. Very good. So uh, this is 0.78. Oh, I don't know what happened. Maybe 0.7 plus 0.21. I know you know the answer. I just rewrite for the sake of the note. So 0.78. Uh, the probability of the other or question mark is 1 minus 0.78. So equal point. Um, two two, and then probably even not English P of English complement equal to one minus P of English, right? 
which is one minus 0.75, which is 0.43. On the exam, I do one notation like that. Okay. All right, last one, and we take a little break. Um, probability rule. Space there. Okay, um, for this one, I want you to try on yourself as well. So, um, and then just answer one, two, three. It is did join or not? Oh my god, I forgot to record. That's all right. It's only a little. Okay, random variables. Um, you gotta remember. Sometimes I ask you to draw stuff like this, like x greater or equal to four, x less than ten, stuff like that. Um, so the x right there, that's x here. The x, maybe I'll use blue. The x is your random variable. It's just a placeholder, really. Random variable of something. Changing variable, new change. A random variable assign a number to each outcome of a random circumstances, or equivalently a random assign a number to each unit in the population. Okay, so in this case, I assign the random variable to be very equal to four. Um, two broad classes of quantitative random variable. I'm not gonna uh, um, take you account to remember what is a random variable. Don't worry about it. As long as you know what its x is, right? It could be, it could wear many hats. Depend on what what context you're talking about. So two two classes of random variables, discrete random variables, and continuous random variable. You already learned the continuous random variable. The uniform distribution and the normal distribution. That's the continuous random variable. You uh, calculate the area under the curve, right? That's continuous. Um, and then the discrete random variable, um, which you're going to learn later on, uh, sometimes they call stick random variable because they only take count like binomial distribution, which we're going to learn later. So let me give you some example. Discrete, discrete random variable. Uh, in this class, binomial which we learn later, distribution. And the continuous random variable, we already learned this, is uniform distribution, uniform distribution and normal distribution. There's many more, but I'm just gonna give you the two because that's all you have to know. So what is the discrete? Like the name suggests, right? discrete mean a quantitative numeric variable that take uh, one of the countable list count right count so one two three four five six etc so all natural numbers so let me highlight here discrete random variable oh, this I want to highlight come on is uh, take one of the countable list of distinct values say the number of phone call you make in a week. So that's, you can only count number of phone call. You don't have 1.5 phone call, right? Um, yeah. Um, and so the continuous random variables is a quantitative numeric variable still, but it can take any value in the interval. Remember the normal distribution or the uniform distribution, right? You scan from left to right. So it could be 1.2, 5.3. It could be between one and uh, one and 10, right? Any number between one and 10, one and 100, whatever. But it could take basically two decimal values. So for example, um, the height. If I put a graph, you guys height on a histogram. Oops. I lost my camera. Yeah. I'll find it somewhere down there. Um, if I would like graph a student height, say somebody somebody height is 5.8, a 5.8. Is that exactly 5.8? No, right? It could be 5.8, 2, 3, 5, 6. It's on and on. It never stops, right? So it could be any value in between. Or same thing with weight. Or same thing with times. Same thing with times. Uh, you would think so. You're like, oh, I can tell you, like, I've taken three hours, 20 minutes to study statistics. 
um, a day, but no, not true, right? That is seconds, mean a second is a lot more, right? So. All right, so so that is continuous random variable and discrete random variable. Um, let's try this one. You tell me which is which. You tell me which is which. Number one. No, no, don't put it on the chat. Just tell me which is which. Way of the car. Yeah, continuous quantitative CQ number of seats. Mm, no number of seats, like your car. How many seats you have in your car? Discrete, right? Discrete. Discrete quantitative. Uh, overall condition of a car. Good, very good, excellence. Mm, condition of the car. Uh, one, two, three is just assigning number. So categorical, right? categorical. Categorical. And length of the car. length of the car. Remember what is continuous? Discrete only take count. Continuous mean, or oh, definitely not categorical, right? Um, <clears throat> continuous mean you can take any values between the numbers, including decimal. So length of the car, yeah, continuous, right? Okay, you can, you can take decimal. <clears throat> All right, um, so that's, uh, on the exam, I will give you something like this and you tell me which is which. Very similar. Mm -hmm. 12.5, finite. So now we talk about finite probability models and um, continuous. It's similar to discrete, really, similar to discrete um, probability model. So, a probability model with a finite sample space is called finite. Um, finite sample space means so earlier we have head to tail, right? or roll die, six-sided die, one to six. So those are finite sample space. Though probability must be um, a number between zero and one and should be added to one. So remember those? All right, so let's try this one. Um, verify this is a valid finite probability model. How do I verify this? So here, how many cup of coffee? Choose an adult age 18 or over in the United States at a random and ask, how many cups of coffee do you drink on average per day? Uh, call the respond X for short, based on a large sample survey. Here is a probability model for the answer you will get. So number here, the, on the first one, the first line number is mean the number of cup of coffee that person drink per day on average and the probability. <clears throat> So how do I verify this is a finite probability model? Remember the definition. Yeah, yes, yeah, right, add it to one. So first of all, is the sample space is finite, right? So one, two, three, and four more, right? Nobody drink infinitely many amount of coffee. So it's finite. Um, second one, you want to prove that is add up to one. So let's do this 0.36 plus 0.26. Is it equal to one? Maya, you let me know. Yeah, thank you. So, yes, it is finite. And you don't have to write that thing. <clears throat> All right, number two, uh, I want you to describe the event X less than four in words. So now from statistic to English, say X less than four means what?
What's x represent? Can we read the problem? X is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, number of cups that somebody drink, right? Somebody drink on average per day. So x less than four means. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Good, very good. So, uh, so this one is, um, I can say, oopsie. Hmm. So, even, uh, so let uh, x less than four, hang on. X less than four is the number of cups of coffee. Darn it. My English is not very good. I understand it. It's just what I, uh, let's see. Um, what did you say, Sean? Number. Good. Thank you very much. That's it. Yeah. What about P of X less than four? You know, I, I want to say something more about this thing. Um, a randomly selected person who drink Less than four cups of coffee a day on average. Yeah, yeah, that's good enough. All right, so it's a bit more better. <clears throat> the reason I add the randomly selected person because x is a random variable. All right, so p of less. So now it's easy. P of x less than four mean. All you have to do is a randomly select. Right? <laughs> so all you do is add it to the probability. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna duplicate this because I'm lazy. Duplicate. Of a randomly, yep, yeah. that's it. Um, express the event have at least one cup of coffee on average day in terms of X. Let's do for the first one first, and we'll talk about the what is the probability of that event. So that's English. Now they want you to change into math. At least one cup of coffee on average, uh, on an average day. Yeah, at least it's I mean great equal two, right? Equal to one. Um, and then what is the probability of this? So p of x great equal to one. It's a discrete. So all you have to do is yeah. So this mean is equal to p of x is equal one plus p of x equal to a discrete. So you can count. You cannot do this with a continuous though, uh, because a uh, probability at a point is zero, right? There's no, no area. Uh, P of X equal three plus P of X greater or equal to four, yeah? Right. So um, 0 0.26, 0 0.19, 0.08. Check out my. That's a good thing here. 
point one one. Oh. You want to draw it? You can draw it out. I would suggest you draw it out. So that's the that's your number line, and then because it's the discrete the discrete probability model, it's gonna be a stick. So you draw your stick. Start from zero, zero, one, two cup of coffee, three cup of coffee, four, and five, etc. Right. So greater than one means from here to here. Right. Here to here. And you add up all the sticks. All right, um, now it's come to continuous probability. Yay, we're gonna be on time. Continuous probability. Um, a continuous prob probability model assign a probability as area under the curve, right? That's all it is, area under the curve. Think uniform distribution and normal distribution. Um, <clears throat> the area under the curve and between any range of value is the probability of an outcome in the, that range. So um, for uniform, Remember, sometimes I ask you to label your distribution on top of the picture. Uniform is going to be A comma B. What's our, what is A and what is B? Do you guys remember? Your exam. If you draw a box, A is your... A and B is your, the end is your width, right? Left end and right end. Um, normal, someone tell me what is the notation for normal distribution? Hint, Greek. <laughs> that Greek thing. Uh, it's just English, <laughs> no, just English, how about? What, what is this one? Yeah, I mean, and then the next one. Uh -huh. Okay, now in Greek. Describe it for me, you don't know what it's called. Mu, right, very good, mu. And then, yeah, sigma, right? Sometimes people know what it is, I just don't know what to call. Um, so that's the distribution. Okay, uniform, A, B, so let's do this one. Below is a model for random variable X, which represent waiting times in minutes to be served at a daily. Um, <clears throat> have you guys tried the Zingerman sandwich shop in Ann Arbor? I did this, I waited there and I construct this probability. <laughs> um, it's overrated, it's, it's overpriced, overrated. It's, yeah, it's overrated. I just wanna know what it is, but I wouldn't pay it again. Too much. Below is uh, so so. Um, what is the appropriate distribution uh, with corresponding parameters? So waiting is from ten to twenty minutes, uh, with the mean is fifteen. Right? What is the probability that randomly uh, a random customer wait at least sixteen minutes? P. So again, when you read this problem, the first thing you do is you do P of X is greater equal to sixteen. Yeah, and now you think, and now you draw. So sixteen. So here is 15 and 16, it should be here, somewhere there. At least so it's gonna be on the right area, right? Um, oh, how do I calculate this? How do I calculate this? It's just a box, so area will be width time height, right? What is your height? What is your height? Point one, right? So density point one. Do you guys remember how you get the height, even though if I don't give it to you? Remember the formula? PDF, probability density function, one over B minus A, right? 20 minus 10 is 10, right? So one over 10 is point one. Uh, so point one, uh, that's your height and your width, your width, four, right? 20 minus 16. One step at a time, right? So, by four, roughly 40%. The probability that you're going to be waiting the Zingerman sandwich shop for at least 60 minutes is 40%. That's pretty high. Um, <clears throat> hope you guys remember. Um, normal here, normal distribution. Do you guys watch The Walking Dead? Yeah. 
I follow the first uh, season and then that's it too long. <laughs> I lost interest. Uh, the television series uh, Walking Dead in uh, um, is an American post-apocalypse horror drama that is based on a comic book. I didn't know it was based on a comic book. Uh, the first episode aired back in October 2010 and earned 25% audience share. That is 25% of all TV in use during the showtime period was turned to tune, tune station airing The Walking Dead. Less acts represent the number of people who watch The Walking Dead. I'm going to highlight that. That's important. I know what X is. Representative who was The Walking Dead. In a random sample of 500 people who watch TV during the time period when the show aired. Okay. Um, the distribution has a mean of 125 and distribution is 10. By the approximate probability that fewer than 220 people select to watch The Walking Dead. So first thing first, for the um, normal distribution, you have to draw the curve. Okay, so normal, let's see, mu is 125. Remember, what's 125 represent? Number of people, right? And then standard deviation is 10. So x axis is number of people, 125 in the middle. What do I want? So you got done this before. Um, find the approximate probability that fewer than two, 220 people select watch The Walking Dead. 220, maybe I'll use blue, somewhere here, 220. Uh, should I shade left or shade right? Left or right? Fewer than 220 less, right? Less, I'll so use um, shade to the left. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you guys remember how to do this? Do you guys remember how to do this? I wanna know what is the probability. So I wanna know the probability here, percent of the blue shade area, what do you need to, to get? What do you need first in order to get the probability for normal distribution? What do you have to look up for the table I told you? The Z-score, right? Z-score, so you need the Z-score. Uh, anyone remember the Z-score? Even I don't know. Observation minus mu divided by sigma, right? So observation is 220 divided by mu, which is 125. Sigma is 10. And then, let me see. <clears throat> no, I want to see that. One, two, 220 mi minus 125. So 9.5. Wow. So do you see a 9.5 on your Z table? I don't think so. I don't think so. Where is the Z table? Okay, on the Z table, well, you don't care about negative pair Z. Um, the maximum is Z go is 3.4, right? Well, so what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? I don't, I don't even need to look up anything bigger than four. I don't even care about, bigger than three, four, I don't even look up on the Z table. I'm just gonna say it's 100%, right, one. Um, even though my picture is kind of deceiving, maybe I should have I should have moved my blue bar to the right more. Maybe I should have, because um, I didn't know what it, what it is, so I'll just draw it. But 
but if if I know what it is, I should have moved my blue ball like, all the way here. <laughs> this is two twenty. Right. Uh, so if I would have, so remember the the standard die. Do you guys remember the standard die? Standard die. This review here, standardized. If I would draw it into a standardized curve, what is the um, distribution of standardized curve? And what? What number here? Yeah, zero, one, right? Zero, one. So zero is your mean, one is standard deviation. Um, so nine, nine is all the way, nine is a blue, all the way down there. And you want the left. So basically, you shave everything, right? So that's almost 100%. Z too big, so that mean P of X is less than or equal to 220 is roughly one. In practice, it's one. Do you guys remember all that? <laughs> sort of, yeah. Remember this because on your final, you will have something like this again. <clears throat> okay, yay, that's it, that's it. We can go early. Uh, do you have any question for this chapter? So um, on Wednesday, we're gonna have a quiz. Is that right? Let me talk about the um, exam as well. Um, and then we'll go. The syllabus. Okay, so Wednesday you have a quiz. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be seven question or six question max. It will be easy. Uh, it will be much easier than the first few. What you wanna do is uh, just study the slides. Okay, make sure you understand. Study the slides. Mm -hmm. um, your exam is gonna be exam two. Let me see. Um, so this weekend. This coming weekend, I'm gonna write the uh, practice exam. I will post it on Friday night. If I don't remind me, okay? If I don't, let me know. Because I probably have it, I just forgot to post it on. So on Friday night, I'm gonna post a uh, practice exam, similar to the exam too. All right, that's it. Have a good night and I'll see you again on Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday has to be in person. Okay, I'll send out an email because you have a quiz. <clears throat>